Glory be to God in the highest. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for the Bible study series. Thank you because this is the year for the manifestation of the sons of God. Though gross darkness covers the earth, in the midst of this gross darkness, it's our light going to shine and it will shine brightly. Thank you because you have given us opportunity to fellowship around your word and feed on your word in these troubled times. Thank you because your word is light, your word is life, your word is strength. And it shall supply every joy we need, every strength, every courage, and every direction we need to go. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are welcome to the second stage of the Bible study series that we started, Manifestation of the Sons of God. This is um, the part two of study one which we have not been able to exhaust. And you remember last week, we were looking at the question on what kind of glory did man have? So I will just go a little bit over um, part of the introduction, and then I will go to just get some of the answers we ruminated on. Man lost the glory that God gave him when man sinned and that that brought us to where we are according to last week's introduction man was created in the image of god and his likeness god molded man and breathed into his nostrils his very his own very essence his nature and character the only thing that god did not share with man was his omni qualities that is omnipotence omnipresence Omniscience, he did not share that, those qualities with man. Obviously, there was a glory and honor bestowed upon man that enabled him to be in dominion over creation. But that glory was lost when man sinned. And the first question is to see, to investigate what that glory actually was, what we lost. I pause to say that there is a way a child that belongs to a royal family was born, will be born out of reality, so he doesn't even have a sense of a loss. By that I mean his great grandfather was a conquering king and a great king. But after his great grandfather died, his grandfather failed to keep the throne. A slave overthrew him, though the history is there. So that slave took over all the assets of the family and so this is the third generation that has lived as servants so by this third generation obviously a fourth generation there is no consciousness left of any kind of royalty so if you tell a child in this fourth generation ah you are from a royal house you say which royal because every trace of royalty will have been lost in those generations. Today, we see man the way we are. We cannot relate to whatever we were, our first father was created to be. So there's a loss. And in this study, part of what we want to do is to recover that loss. But for you to recover the loss, you need to know what you lost. So man immediately became naked, and when the glory left, he had to sew fig leaves to cover his nakedness. A glimpse of the covering glory that man used to have appeared after Moses stayed in the presence of God for 40 days, where the glory rubbed on him again. So much so that when the men of Israel, when he came down to meet with his fellow Israelites, they could not look at his face. In fact, they were afraid, and they said, Moses, cover your face. That gives us a little glimpse of what man used to be like. His fellow men were afraid. They couldn't see his face because they said it was glittering. It was, glittering. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was bright. It was luminous. The same thing with Stephen, the, the disciple that was the first matter. When he was before the council, when he was putting up a defense, 
The Bible says Stephen's face shined when he was about to be stoned to death. This glory plainly showed on his face just as he looked up into heaven, where heaven was literally open to him, and there he saw the Lord Jesus sitting on the right hand of power. So that those two situations show us. The third one is the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ when he manifested this covering glory at Mount the Mount of Transfiguration, when he spoke, when he took Peter, James, and John with him, where Moses and Elijah appeared before him. So in that story, you see the majesty that was on Jesus. So we are now saying that if man was created with such majesty, can we get it back? A critical analysis of man's original glory, what was lost and the process of recovery is what we are studying because we want to get back to glory. We have those scriptures listed and then um, we had the first question last week which was um, describe man in his original glory. It's a struggle we have been trying to make. However, we have some, some of the summary answers of what we try to describe. So those of us in the Bible study class, I will want us to give maybe one answer each of what kind of glory we, we lost. What kind of glory we lost. Um, we will need the microphone to go around. So who is going to start? Well, if you have, the, if you have your mic, you can start. It doesn't matter the position of the answer. Thank you. So let's have the, um, because the answers need to go on. You, have, you can go ahead, sir. Is that sound picking? Please spread the mics around so that we can get everybody. We need one here. Go ahead, sir. Yes, like I was saying in Genesis 2, 19 to 20, I read, and out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fall of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he could call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. So in this case, uh, God gave man great wisdom to understand all creatures and control all the earth's creation. That is why he could name all these creatures as a result of the great wisdom that God has given man. That must be great glory. Man single-handedly named all creatures. And that tells you the level of wisdom and glory that God bestowed upon man. Yes, and I want to encourage you that we need to pray to recover that wisdom, that level of wisdom. Can we get the next person to answer? Yes. Sir, according to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, I read, And God said, Let us make man in our image and our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 
So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the, the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God gave man great beauty and surrounded man with light, because God is light, and he, make, he, he made them like himself. Yes, the next answer. In Genesis 1, 26 to 28, God then said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over ev every living thing that moves on the earth. So God gave man the glory of great authority over all earth's creation, to control all creation. Yes, and um, can I have a fourth one? Yes, sir. Um, I believe that God shared part of his power with man. God gave man great power and gave man the ability to, to create, to invent. He also gave man the the power to dominate and subdue everything on earth. And that also can be found in uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Um, if God gave man all this power and authority, uh, today we see that man is just struggling to get back through studies, research, invention. All those things were given to man from beginning to have control. And you can see how far man degenerated. And man has been, it has taken us these 2,000 years plus to even develop to the place where we are now. We can invent some things and do some things in the beginning before we dropped off. Man was by far greater. There are still areas that we cannot even do anything about. So if we look at the various scriptures that we brought forth last week, Genesis 1, 26, Psalm 8, verse 4 to 5, um, Genesis 1, 28, Psalm 8, verse 6, the, the authority that was displayed later on, we will understand that God actually invested great glory upon man, which we are still trying to um, grasp with. So one of the contributions said man was made light because God is light. So we had some, we had some light radiating. Man was radiant, used to shine light. And that example we saw when Moses came back from the presence of God. He was, his face was so bright that the Israelites were afraid. They couldn't look at his face. They said he should wear a veil. So he had to cover. So just imagine man was in his full glory. No animal could look at his face. No wonder if he told the lion, sit down there, the lion will sit down. He had so much wisdom that he could talk to the elephant. For example, how did Noah get the animals, both wild and domestic, to get into his ark? To his authority. 
Hey, you lion, move. You tiger, move. It's authority. The authority that they could not challenge or harass. Every creature on earth, including snakes. And so if man, if we get back to the place of glory that we used to have, I believe that a lot more will be easy for us. He said, subdue everything on earth. And by the grace of God, during this year of manifestation of the sons of God, we will begin to get back to this glory and begin to manifest it in the name of Jesus. But um, some questions came last week that we could not attend to, which I will attend to today. And, um, and so that means the question that will come this week, we will attend to them uh, next week. So I want us to have an understanding of the glory that God bestowed on man. Because the question is, describe man in his original glory. It is when you know what we used to have that you now have a consciousness to pray to recover what we lost. But if you don't even know that this is what we used to have, you can't even start recovering. Because you are like somebody who has been robbed, but you didn't know you were robbed. Because the person who robbed you, robbed you long before your grandfather was born. So you don't even have the story of what you were robbed of. But <clears throat> if by the grace of God, through study of the word of God, we can say, ah, so this is what I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to have. Then we can start praying and taking steps to recover. So... I'll be sharing with you in this study on understanding the glory upon mankind. That is the glory which we had before sin took it off. In Psalm 8, verse 4 to 6, I will read the HSB version of the Bible and God's Word version. Psalm 8, verse 4 to 6, say, What is man that you remember him? The son of man that you look after him. You made him a little less than God and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him Lord over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet. You can see that the four answers that were given are coded in this scripture. You made him a little less than God. That means eh, magnificence or great beauty. Because if nobody can compare to God in beauty, Nobody can compare to him in majesty. It's beautiful to behold. And what is beauty? Beauty is that quality that gives pleasure to the senses. It is dazzling, splendid in appearance. It's alluring and fascinating, appealing, and very attractive and charming. That's why you call it beautiful. When you see a beautiful flower, it takes your attention. You can't just pass. You will look at it and look again and look again because of its beauty. When you pass by a fragrant flower that has nice fragrance, you say, what's, what's, where is that fragrance coming from? You will turn aside until you find it. You go around. You sniff it. You say, wow, this, is, this, this, this fragrance is just, it's just good. It's just beautiful. It's just wonderful. You are attracted to it. That is why some of us even go to get those flowers and come to plant them in our houses. Because we want the beauty, we want the fragrance. So, God is beautiful to behold. God is majestic in beauty. He has a majestic kind of beauty. God has a radiant beauty. And if he made man like himself, then he shared that quality with man. So that when you look at man, you just feel like hanging around man. You feel like staying, you just, you want to stay with man. You want to stay around man. Another form of glory which God bestowed upon man was prosperity, affluence. God said, you own everything. I'm giving you everything for food. Everything. I give you the earth. I give you whatever is buried in the earth. So the land, the space is his own. That's great. That's great asset. Of course, 
Some of us who have rich uncles, rich fathers, rich, you know how much we want to hang over around our rich friends. Because they are rich. The Bible says a rich, a rich man has many friends and many brothers. But a poor man, he will chase his brothers with words. They will go further away from him. The more he looks from them, the more they will run from him. Because he's poor. But if he's rich, he doesn't look for them. They look for him. Why? There is a glory about wealth and rich, riches. That people want to stay around you. Identify with you. God gave man the wealth of the earth. God put man in a state of extreme happiness and prosperity. There was just this joy and happiness with man. We really was in Garden of Eden. God gave him a palatial glory. All these animals report to him. In one of the scriptures that one of our brothers read, he, he read that man named every animal. Whatever he called it was what they were. That is authority. Wisdom and authority manifested. Whatever he said was final. He was a king. Man was a king. Man was sovereign. His authority on earth was sovereign. He was the president of the entire earth. He had dominion. He had a sphere. And nobody, nobody challenged him in that sphere. Man had great honor. Glory is great honor. Praise distinction. When you say somebody, ah, today was very glorious for him. The day they honor him, the day he became governor, the day he was sworn in as governor, it was a very honorable day. The day he, 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 he became the champion, the, the fastest runner, and they gave him the gold medal, and they decorated him, and the whole stardom cheered. It was a moment of honor. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is glory. Man had something admirable something to admire he was a very praiseworthy person and everyone who looked at man said ah i wish i am like him there was a spiritual glory about man god made man like himself he was full of love we lost it so you ask yourself how much of god's glory is still left in my life Are the snakes afraid of me? Will lions see me and run? Can I command them and they obey me? Uh, a, a little glimpse of what the original man was. Just a little glimpse. I tried to look at Moses' life. Moses stretched forth a rod and Red Sea divided. He wanted to pass with three million people. God said, Moses, don't waste your time organizing a prayer meeting. There is authority I've given you. Stretch forth your rod. And there was an expressway in the sea. That means man was just to wish it and command it. And there was a dry expressway and three million people went past. They didn't wait through the water. They passed through dry bed. And water was standing erect on the left. Water was standing erect on the right. And they passed through. But the same sea, when Pharaoh and his soldiers got in, Moses, God said, Moses, what are you doing? It is you I gave the authority. If you don't send the water back, it won't go back. Then Moses remembered, and Moses now ordered the water to go back. I said, God, this is authority. Just let me have it, and I don't need to take any aircraft to U.S. All I need to do is to say, America, where are you? <laughs> and I will just appear there. Don't you understand? And look at Elijah conquered great territory, distances. He would just say where he wanted. Now you begin to say, sir, don't you think you are going to the extreme? Have you forgotten one evangelist, Philip, in the New Testament? Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Who after he had preached in Samaria and the brethren had received Holy Ghost baptism, Holy Spirit said, move now. You have a passage to preach. And they took him to the wilderness. The Bible didn't say how he was transported. It didn't say God used a motorcycle or rode on a donkey. 
The Bible said he just appeared there. And when he finished baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch, the man that came from Ethiopia, when he finished baptizing him, the Bible said the Spirit of God took him. And he was in Azotus, another town. Wow. I'm believing that before Jesus comes, one of these days, I will be using that kind of transport system. <laughs> Those of you in America listening to me, just know that one day without visa, I will appear in front of your house and I say, it's time, let's go for fellowship. And I wouldn't need to pay anybody ticket. I don't need any American airline. I don't need any British Airways. And I don't need any immigration service. That is the glory we lost. Because if it happened in the Old Testament and happened in the New Testament, then that means it is a possibility. Now let, let's, let's, look at, let's look at what happened when Joshua said, son, stand down still. He wanted to finish the war that he started at about 5 p.m. in the evening, 5.30. He found that if there should be a sunset, that war would be inconclusive. He needed the daylight. And for the next 23 hours plus, the sun could not move. I want you to think of it. And the Bible says there is no day on earth that God honored the voice of a man like that day. That means that is the authority God shared with man that even the sun and the moon should be subject to us. God created man not to be a stooge but to be a ruler. So this confirmatory acts gives us a glimpse of what man originally was created to be. Looking at Moses and Joshua, Elijah and Elisha. Then come to Jesus Christ and the apostles. They were gods in their time. They were gods on the earth. Elisha, well, Elisha looked at uh, a, a, troop, a, 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 a troop of soldiers sent to him. He said, um, who are you looking for, Elisha? He said, blindness. That's authority. Paul did the same thing in the New Testament. Sir Just Paulus was standing against him. The man that was called by Jesus. He ordered blindness for one year. Just temporary for him. One year, you will not see light again. You will not see for a season. That's tell you, that tells you that Man was rated very high by God and given such a great authority. When you look at what God did to Egypt through Moses, then you can see that if you and I can get back into the original glory, we shall rule the earth. And I am believing God that this manifestation will be restored in the name of Jesus. So, we have the glory as God's image. And we have God's glory as his own persons. And we must not lose, we must recover that glory which man used to have, but which we have lost. At this point, I will look at what is glory itself. So glory is that quality that attracts praise, commands admiration, and honor. Glory makes you outstanding, draws attention to you, makes you center of attention. Glory can be the result of triumph or success, wisdom or skill, endowments or talents, wealth or riches, authority or power. Adam had all this bestowed on him. And by the grace of God, we will recover everything in Jesus' name. He had it bestowed on him until he ate the forbidden fruit. So today, the way back to glory will be to recover the presence of God. Because I found that when Moses went into the presence of God, he came back with that glory. I found that when Moses saw the burning fire, that was the beginning of supernatural manifestations in his life, he came from that encounter with glory. When the apostles had the encounter with the Holy Ghost, they came out of that encounter with glory. Peter told the lame man, rise up and walk. That's the glory. So a divine encounter can be the beginning of restoration of glory in your life and in my life. So if any man wants to get back to that glory, 
then there must be a divine encounter. When you have a divine encounter, it sets you up to start recovering. For example, when the gifts of the Spirit start manifesting in your life, it makes you to stand out. You have information that no other person has. When you succeed as a scientist and you invent something, it makes you to stand out. Because you have an information that no other person had. When Joseph went to Egypt and interpreted Pharaoh's dream, he stood out. Immediately they promoted him and honored him. Because he had access to wisdom that others didn't have. The same thing with Daniel. He was a slave in Babylon. But wisdom made him to stand out. So one of the things you will pray for in the restoration of that glory, particularly, is wisdom. Wisdom will make you to excel. Wisdom will make you to stand out. Wisdom will make you to dominate. And let me tell you, if, you, if they put you in a big position and you don't have wisdom to sustain the position, they will make a fool of you and you will drop out. You can see how our present leaders are failing. They lack wisdom. Ordinary corona is driving us like rats, everybody into the hole. That tells you we are lacking in wisdom. But some wise people have been able to deal with wisdom. And they have been able to deal with corona. They have kept their territory away from corona. They have discovered what can kill corona. Some medical scientists have come out to say that corona is very fragile. Ordinary heat will kill corona. And some people are still under fear of corona. It's going to kill us. It's going to kill us. Everybody is living in threat and terror. Ordinary hot water, hot air. We kill Corona. When this Corona thing first came out, and I, I didn't even pray about it, I was just saying, God, what kind of terrible thing is coming upon the world? I just had in one of the revelations, Corona is very frail and fragile. Shout hallelujah. And it collapsed. So we shouted hallelujah. I so saw it collapse. I said, ah, this is that is driving everybody. Some weeks later, I just had a medical scientist saying that Corona is a very fragile virus. That cannot survive beyond 56 degree centigrade. So getting that kind of heat into your nose is just the system. And that is something our ancient mothers did whenever you had kata. They covered you with cloth and put boiling water and tell you to breathe in the, the steam. As you are breathing it in, they rub you with metholatum. After doing that two or three times, the whole thing disappears. Corona is in the class of kata flu. And it has sent everybody running into a hole. Don't go to work. Don't go to office. Corona, corona, corona. Don't shake anybody. Stay away. And thousands have died and are still dying. And there is a solution. When President Trump first announced that chloroquine should be used, America didn't want to confirm it. Now, shamefully, they have confirmed it. So God has given intelligence and wisdom to man. It is that loss of wisdom that is making us slaves under circumstances. We are going to pray for one thing. God will give us wisdom. God will give us wisdom. God will give our children wisdom. And by wisdom we shall dominate. By wisdom we shall excel. So I want to announce to you that one of the things we lost in that glory, because all have seen and come short, of the glory of God. One of the things we lost is wisdom. Great wisdom. And God has opened a window for us. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask from God who gives liberally. James chapter 1 verse 5. And he will give to every one of us. And fortunately for us, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So we have some questions from last week which I am going to look at. And then, when we look at those questions, we will answer them like the questions for today. And then, um, we, will, we will give the summary and then wait for the questions for today, which we'll deal with during the next study. Questions from last previous week. Um, question one. We can show it to them on the screen now. According to 1 John 3, 1 to 2, 
that was read earlier in the study, it appears that a believer cannot truly really manifest the divine nature until we see Jesus, until we see him. And the second question is, 1 John 3, 9 says, the seed of God cannot sin. Kindly expatiate on this as it is a controversial scripture in the Pentecostal movement today. Then question three, there are so many conflicting reports and interpretation about the current happenings around the world from leaders of opinion in the kingdom. How do we sift the chaff from the wheat? That is from one of our radio listeners that identifies his server, him or herself as chocolate gold. And the other person, T.O. Now, so let me start with question one. Um, and in starting with that question, I will want one of our uh, participants in the Bible study to read for us 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. So we have exactly what that scripture is saying so that um, we can answer the question. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. Yes. Beloved. Behold. Yes. What Carry manner on. of love the Father had bestowed upon us. Very good. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear that we shall, what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Yes. Um, in answering that question, I will say that our transformation is, is in stages. We are moving from glory to glory. Our transformation cannot be total for now. But by the special grace of God, the day we see Jesus, the complete transformation shall be done. Can I hear your amen? But for now, we are moving from glory to glory. We are moving from glory to glory. As you move from being a baby Christian and you are maturing, you will find that the authority you carry increases. You find that the wisdom you manifest increases. That means the glory is growing. It's coming back gradually, but it is growing. So we are moving from glory to glory. The fullness of the glory, however, will not be until we see Jesus. For example, um, you can move from glory of being sickly to glory of being healthy. You enjoy good health through faith. You have moved. You are not sickly again. You are spending 24-7, January 1 to December 31, in good health. But your body is still mortal. The fullness of glory is a body that will never die again. That is not subject to mortality. So when are we going to arrive there? We know that the day we see Jesus in the rapture, that glory shall be full. For example, we know in part, no matter the knowledge you have now, it is partial. But there is a time coming, according to Apostle Paul, when we shall know as we are known. You won't need anybody to tell you this is Peter. The day you see Apostle Peter, say, ah, Apostle Peter, we thank you for your letter. Your letter strengthened us. Ah, Paul. We didn't know you're a short man like this. Ah, your letters are very powerful. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So nobody will introduce and say, this is Paul. You will know. For example, nobody told Peter on the mountain of transfiguration, this is Moses, this is Elijah. He knew them because there was a divine presence that came, a glory. So in that glory, he didn't need introduction. He said, let us build three tabernacles. That is in Matthew chapter 17 from verse 1. One for Elijah, one for Moses, and one for Jesus. We, we don't need the tabernacle. Let us just stay here. We are okay. 
They entered the glory where no, there was no hunger, there was no lack, there was no discomfort, there was a beautiful feeling, there was a beautiful presence, there was a happy presence, there was no hunger, no pain. And he said, let's just stay here. We are not going down the mountain again. So can there be a condition around a man that he doesn't have sense of need and no sense of fear, but has sense of satisfaction and complete fulfillment to the point that he said, we'll build three tabernacles, one for Jesus, one for Moses, one for Elijah, none for us. We are okay. And when the glory lifted, they say, ah, we wish we can just remain there. That is the reason why when some brothers have accident or they fall sick and they mistakenly see the glory of heaven, they don't want to come back. No matter the prayer you pray, oh, this man must not die. The man will not answer you because he has suddenly entered the glory. So what is he going to do in this place of suffer head where... If Boko Haram, is, Boko Haram is not after you, kidnapper is after you, now Corona has come, and then they are now saying no work and everything. Suddenly, any man who mistakenly sees glory does not want to come back here. And so, we will not get into the fullness of glory until we see Jesus. Now, the next question says, we are the seed of God. And... Um, a seed of God cannot sin. Can somebody read that First John chapter 3, verse 9 for us? In fact, read First John chapter 3, start from verse 6 and read up to verse 10 for a clearer um, understanding. First John chapter 3, we'll start from verse 6 to verse 10. Yes. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Yes. Whoever sin has neither seen him nor known him. Yes. Verse 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Yes. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifest. Carry on. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, okay. nor is he who does not love his brother. Okay. So if you look at it um, together in the context in which it is said, it is that same First John chapter 3 we say that when we see him, we shall be like him. So what that scripture is saying is this. Anyone that is, not born, that is born of God does not practice sin. Does not have a habit of indulging in sin. Brethren, we have the mercy of God that has purged us. It is to the credit of a child of God to deliberately discipline himself or herself to walk in the fear of God and righteousness and not to dodge, to savour the taste of sin. Every time you indulge in sin, some glory is stolen from you. So imagine you have recovered this level of glory. Then you now allow yourself to go into sin and you lose it. Look at the glory that was on Samson. The glory was so great the man could move iron gate that 20 ordinary men, 50 ordinary men cannot move. The man could kill 1,000 foxes. The man could tear lion with bare hand. They tied rope on him. The broom just burnt. There was a kind of fire that came from his body. Ha ba! But that glory was lost when he persistently indulged in fornication. As he continued to repeatedly indulge, one day the glory just left. And the enemies came and arrested him. 
So it is not to your credit as a child of God to think there is a profit or benefit in sin. So let me dodge to enjoy sin and come back. That time you dodge to enjoy sin, something was stolen. For all have sinned. So anybody who is born of God, therefore, does not take pleasure or joy in sin. If you see anybody who is living in sin and is boasting about it and giving testimony of it, he's a child of the devil. He's under the authority of the devil. So you see, this is how we know those who are born of God and those who are not born of God. Because those who are not born of God, they celebrate sin. They conceal it. They rejoice in it. But those who are, not, who are born of God, if they mistakenly get into sin, they are unhappy and they want to get out of it. So if you are happy with sin and you hate righteousness, it's an indication you are not born of God. So no controversy. Uh, bishops, general overseers, pastors, and ministers of God who like to indulge in sin, they like to lose their glory. And there's a way you will lose, 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 and then you will lose your eyes. Samson lost his eyes. He did not just lose the anointing. He started losing his eyes. Some people have lost their money. Some people have lost their marriages. Some people have lost their positions. Some people have lost their offices. Some people have lost their wealth. Some people have lost their health. There was a man who came from America to meet me. He needed help. He was a pastor, but he kept on indulging in adultery until... The devil stole something in his heart. And the doctors in America said they couldn't help him. So somebody said, you better go to Nigeria. His heart was going to fail. But that day he found mercy. So please remain a child of God. Refuse to be a child of the devil. Delight in righteousness. And so there's no controversy. You are a seed of God. Sin is not your nature. Can I hear you say amen? And the quest, third question, there are so many conflicting reports and interpretations about the current happenings around the world. That's Corona and 5G. I am not a medical doctor. Neither am I a 5G scientist. All I do is use phone if they make it available. But I have enough sense to know the work of the devil <laughs> different from the work of God. So what I want to say is this. Any attempt to bring a cure for corona that says because we want to receive vaccine for corona, you must receive a chip inserted in your blood it's not vaccination. Vaccination can be received without any chips. A chip inserted into your body is something that is very technologically revolutionary in nature, which means you don't need to carry card again. Once they beam light on where that chip is, all your information is known. You don't need a passport again. So why do I want to carry a chip in my blood, in my vessel, in my flesh. I think they need, it looks like the mark of the beast that people will have in their left hand or in their forehead. If they now say to, the thing needs to be on your left hand or needs to be on your forehead, I think they are confirming what the book of Revelation said. If that is the mark, they will soon get to the point where they will tell us not to pray to God not to go to church, they will introduce us to a false god. We are waiting for them. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Let them come out plain. They can hide for a while, but they will soon come out plain. If the government of the world now says they have found a new god for us to serve, not the almighty god, that is when we shall show them that we are true children of God and we are ready to die than to continue in this world without Christ. We will let everybody know that we are ready to die. We don't want to stay in this world if, the, if we have to bow to an idol or to any human being as our God. 
I don't even want to worship an unknown God. I want to worship the true almighty God. And then, in a democratic generation, you can't force everybody to receive a mark. You will need to have impose a dictator on us. And if you want to be a dictator, you can have the world to yourself. What I can assure you is that those who killed Jesus Christ have since died and their bones have rotten in the grave. The Jesus they killed rose after three days. Even if you kill me as a Christian, I will still come alive and I will govern over you. That's the truth. That's the truth. So I'm not afraid of dying because even if I die, I will rise from the dead and I will still come back and reign over the wicked in this world. And we are coming. Surely as Jesus died and rose from the dead, we will also rise from the dead. So rest your mind. Don't interpret anything. Don't speak like an illiterate. Wait for the plans to come out. Don't speak ahead. So I don't know anything. If 5G is good for use, uh, for technology, we will use it. But if 5G is coming with death warrant, we shall reject it. So I don't see any reason why people should start worrying. Antichrist is not going to come secretly. He's going to come openly. So if Antichrist is coming, he will come openly. And he will declare himself as the solution to world problems. He is not going to hide. But don't worry. Before then, the trumpet will sound. I'm not going to be here hanging around for Antichrist to be making noise. There's going to be a first batch of movement of those who believe in Jesus Christ according to Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13 to the end that the trumpet will sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first and then we shall join. At the sound of the last trumpet, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, there is a day set in which there is going to be a mass departure of those who fear God from the earth. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those of us who are alive shall join them. I am waiting for the rapture. I am not waiting for death. I'm waiting for the sound of the trumpet. The signs are all there. The gospel is being preached in all nations. So separating the chaff from the wheat is this. Judge nothing beforehand. Be patient. Uh, the Antichrist will show itself. So don't get edgy. Just keep serving the Lord and never deny Jesus. I want to thank you for staying tuned for tonight's Bible study. I'm going to pray. And I said the one prayer we're going to pray tonight is, God, the wisdom that our fathers lost, restore to us. Let us pray. Say after me, Father, thank you for this revelation. Thank you for this understanding. A great glory has been lost. We want that glory back. Beginning with wisdom. Lord, restore to me. Restore to us as a church. Restore to our children. The wisdom. The great wisdom. To dominate the earth. To rule the earth. To understand the creation. The wisdom. To walk in love. And in righteousness. The wisdom to defeat the wicked and their wickedness. The wisdom to subdue the earth, subdue the devil, evil spirits, destroy their works. The wisdom to destroy sickness and disease. The wisdom to excel in everything we do. The wisdom for witty inventions. The wisdom to invent positive technologies. The wisdom to discover hidden riches. The wisdom to create wealth. Oh Lord, fill me with this wisdom. Restore unto me the wisdom to grow in righteousness. Go ahead and pray that prayer. I'm praying the spirit a while and I'm going to pray for you. Father, we thank you. Let this wisdom be released to us tonight. Let your mercy, let your mercy restore us to this wisdom. Lord, we just, we just one of the things we have identified in this glory that was lost is wisdom. Please, Lord, restore to us. Thank you, Father. God of all wisdom. God of all wisdom. Restore to us this great wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus, 
I decree tonight, according to the promise of God, that says he will give wisdom liberally to all of us who have asked. We have asked for ourselves and for our children. We will receive the wisdom. We receive because you say you will give to those who ask. Since we have asked, thank you for giving us. And by faith, we receive wisdom. And we shall move from wisdom to wisdom. From one wisdom to greater wisdom. To greater wisdom. Every day we move us to greater wisdom. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. When we come back next week, by the grace of God, we shall be dealing with the second question in study one, which is going to be what happened to man's original glory and whose sons are we meant to be. God bless you. For the Bible studies tonight, by the special grace of God, um, those of us who are prepared with our offering, we shall take our offering and honor God with it. And those of you who are listening to us online, just bless the Lord with your offering as God has blessed you. And always remember that every offering we give goes on record. And the Father will never forgive, forget a any seed that is sown. And remember, it's actually your offering that determines your harvest. Because your offering rises to God <clears throat> as a seed. And God blesses it and multiplies it. May the Lord bless the offering. Father, I just command your blessing upon the offering of your children. Wherever they are giving it all over the world, let this offering be accepted to you. Bless, accepted to you. Accept, let it come to you with acceptance. Lord, bless their labor. Bless their investment. Bless them with, with wisdom to make money. Favor them, Lord. Let your children never lack. And in families where there is hardship, Lord, I pray, turn it around. Give them abundance. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.